patient generally comes into hospital either the night before surgery or sometimes the morning of surgery. We take them to the operating theatre and we attach a frame to their head. This is done with some sedation and some local anaesthetic. Once we've attached the frame, we take the patient down to the radiology department where we perform a CT scan. This CT scan has very fine cuts which allows us to fuse the CT with the MRI scan that the patient would have had one or two weeks beforehand. We then take the two scans and we use very advanced planning software and very high-tech computers to determine exactly where the electrode needs to be positioned. Once we've selected the specific target, we've performed all of the manoeuvres on the computer system, we then place the patient on the operating table and we start the operation. The operation involves making one incision in general, but occasionally two incisions, and making a couple of small holes in the skull. We then open the lining over the brain and we begin the process of recording and stimulating in the target and sometimes around the target. Patients awake for the procedure in most cases. This allows us to assess whether or not we're obtaining a benefit when we stimulate and it also allows us to determine whether or not we're getting any untoward side effects. The aim is to be able to provide a really good benefit with stimulation but to avoid any significant side effects. Once we've decided exactly where the electrode needs to be positioned, we take the permanent electrode and we insert that into the brain. The electrode is attached to the skull using a special cap and the ends of the electrode stay buried under the scalp in preparation for stage two. We then close the incision and take the frame off. After the electrodes have been implanted and the wound has been closed and the frame has been taken off, the patient undergoes a CT scan. The aim of the post-operative CT scan is to make sure that there's no complications such as some bleeding, but also to make sure that the electrodes are in the correct position. After their first operation, the patient generally stays in hospital for around 24 to 48 hours, sometimes a little bit longer depending upon their individual circumstances. Quite often patients notice that their symptoms are a lot better and their medication requirements are much lower. This is known as a microlesion effect. The microlesion effect is a result of passing the electrode through the correct area and you get some swelling around that area which simulates what you might receive with stimulation. The microlesion effect generally wears off after a few days, sometimes after a week or two but obtaining a good microlesion effect is generally a really good indicator that the patient's going to obtain a significant benefit once the battery is put in.